I actually wanted to work on our audio today. I wanted to do our music, voices, and sound effects. Um, but it's actually a lot harder than I thought it would be to find royalty-free, free-to-download uh, music in WAV format. Because if you don't import your audio as WAV format, um, Unreal will think it is a media me, fi file media source instead of being, well, you know, a sound that it can use to play. Which is, you know, kind of inconvenient. Um, so since I could not really find anything to use, I'm just going to work on our gallery instead. You might have noticed that I imported some more images just because, well, they're images. Having five images in our gallery would not be very interesting to look at. And these images are from itch.io again, also by Connect. It is the miscellaneous visual novel backgrounds and the Arabian inspired visual novel backgrounds. They're under the CC BY 4.0 license. Um, yeah, I believe the author is Angel Wehrman, aka Connect. So let's move on to our actual. Oh, I also make sure that they are set to the right uh, user interface stuff. So user user interface clamp clamp and uh, UI in the texture mode over there. Moving on, let's actually work on our gallery now. So we're gonna need a few blueprints in our content widgets. So we're gonna make sorry not blueprints widgets. Uh, widget blueprint. This is gonna be w underscore gallery. This is gonna be the one that shows up in our menu. We're going to need a gallery button, w underscore gallery button. And we also need a w underscore gallery image. This is going to be the um, sort of big image that takes over the screen when you click on a gallery button, which is going to be in our gallery. So in our gallery, let's replace our canvas panel with a scroll box. Because we want to be able to scroll up and down for a gallery if we have too many images, to, too many images to fit on screen. And in the scroll box, we want a uniform grid panel. This is going to be this is going to allow us to place stuff in a grid, basically. Let's make sure that it is a variable, and we'll call this. Um, oh, it doesn't matter what we call it actually. So in our menu, let's make sure we add our. button or our gallery to our widget switcher so gallery widget switcher here we go and let's um work on our gallery stuff so in our gallery we're going to need to create our buttons so let's get rid of all of these and we'll make a new custom event like we did for our codex we'll call this um create gallery buttons and once again it's going to be based on our asset manager so let's go to our edit project settings asset manager and we're going to add a new primary asset type to scan hit the plus sign call this uh, gallery images make sure you don't put a space again otherwise it will return nothing which will be very frustrating for you for the object type it's going to be texture 2d And the directory is going to be our backgrounds. If you don't want a um, background to show up in your gallery, just make sure it's not in that folder. Make another folder for your uh, galleries, images, gallery specific images, I guess. Okay. So we're going to create gallery buttons based on the get asset ID, asset ID. Type is going to be gallery images, and we're going to do for each. In the loop body, create a widget. This widget type is going to be our gallery button. Sorry, that's codex button, gallery button. And we're going to add it to our uniform grid panel. So get uniform grid panel and add. Sorry, wrong add. Add child. Now, here's something about our uniform grid panel. It doesn't actually um, put them in a grid automatically for us. We have to manually tell it where in the grid to go. If we were to hit play right now, 
or actually if we were to hit play after making sure our button does something so if we go to graph and choose our gallery button do the unclicked show menu widget sorry show menu widget this is going to be number four and we're going to get our gallery w underscore gallery and um, create gallery buttons. We're going to do this here for now just to show what's happening. Uh, we're actually going to move this to our game instance but let's show what's happening right now. If we hit play gallery that's interesting nothing happened Let's debug this, go to our gallery, that worked. This is being run, and we... Oh, actually something is happening, I believe. Um, we just don't see it because our gallery buttons don't look like anything. That's my bad. Alright, let's go to our gallery, uh, gallery button. And this is just going to be a uh, button. So let's get rid of this canvas panel, delete that, and we'll put a button in here button in here. If we compile, save, and let's hit play again, go to our gallery, we see our button. And there are actually 12 of these. If we look at our debug thing, we have 12 of them, but they're all stacked on top of each other because we didn't tell our um, grid how to uh, place them in our, our, well, grid. So let's go back to our gallery, and after we create our gallery button, we're going to have to tell it uh, where to put it. So let's get our slot cast to uniform grid slot and set the um, column and set the row. Now this math is actually really simple um, to get the column and the row but in case you don't know uh, I figure I should explain it because this math is sort of something you just automatically do when you know how to do it, but when you don't know how to do it, it looks kind of strange. So what we're going to do is go to... I don't have anything open. Let's go to Photoshop. And where's my Wacom pen? Ah, uh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to create a new... Sure. We have a grid here. Let's make it 3 by 4 and our images are going to go, um, the number of our images is going to go like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay? Because we start at 0 because that's where our indexes start, it's number 0, not number 1. And to get our, um, oh, which one is this? Column. To get our column, all we're going to do is say, sorry, not column, row. To get our row, we're just going to do our index i divided by our uh, width. Width? Width. Okay, so for example, if I was 0, then it's going to be 0 divided by 3, which is obviously 0. The 1 divided by 3 is going to give us, well, 0 0.33333, 3. but when you do an int divided by an int, int divided by int, it's going to give you an int. So it's going to get rid of your decimal points. So instead of giving us 0 0.3333, it's going to give us 0, which is our um, the correct row. 2 divided by 3, again, is going to give us 0, because it's, it's 0. 3 divided by 3 is going to give us 1, so now we're in, in column 1, sorry, row 1. Column? Row, I'm sorry, I'm bad at talking. 4, again, is divided by 3, is going to give us 1, with a remainder of 1, and you get the point. 9 divided by 3 is 3, so it's up here. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2. Okay. To get our column, we're going to do our i modulo width. And what modulo does is it does a division, but it gives you the remainder instead of giving you the whatever it is. You um, So, for example, one div 0 divided by 3 again is going to give a 0 with a remainder of 0. 1 divided by 3 is going to give a 0 with a remainder of 1. 2 divided by 3 is 0 with a remainder of 2, and you get the point. 
So for example, 10 divided by 3, um, I forgot how to write the division thing. I haven't done that in so long. Whatever. We get 3, so that's our row. And then 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1, and that's our remainder. It's 1. So that would be our column number 1. So to put this into practice, for uh, we'll get our array index. That's going to be our i divided by a width. So let's actually make this a variable so we can change it anytime we want. Uh, we'll call this our images per row. Oh, and we'll make this a um, int with a default value of 3. Okay. So we're going to do our index divided by images per row, and that's going to plug into our column. I, I think I got that wrong, but whatever. And then we'll do modulo. Images per row, modulo into our row. Let's see if that worked. If we play now, go to our gallery. Nothing happened. Where's our button? This is not being called for oh, because I got rid of it in my menu. Okay. Let's um let's just add it to our game instance. I don't want to add it to our menu again. Game instance. Uh we will get our menu widget. Get the gallery, w underscore gallery, and then tell it to create um, gallery buttons. We'll need some more input for this later, but we'll leave it like that for now. Let's hit play, go to our gallery, and now we have four, okay, I did, I did it in the wrong order, but whatever. You see now we have a grid. We have one, two, three, four per row and three um, columns. Let's fix this actually we want it to be the other way around so our divide goes into our row and our modulo goes into my column I always get this order mixed up it's something that eventually is gonna happen there we go so now we have three uh, images per row now these buttons are kinda of, um, small so let's fix the size we're gonna do a wrap with a size box and I'm just going to force its size to be um, let's do 160 let's go 320 by 180 there we go that's better uh, this is actually sort of hmm they're not really centered the way I want them to be. Let's can we center this like that? See what happens. Okay, well now it's centered like that, but now we need some padding. Um, let's go to our slot padding right there. Child layout uh, slot padding. We'll do something like thirty. There we go, and now we can see our scroll box happening. And obviously, that's um, if you think that's too small, we can go back to our gallery, change our images per row to four, like that. All right. Moving on to add some actual logic, um, we need to do stuff when the gallery uh, when the gallery buttons are clicked, or actually, we need to tell the gallery images what they look like first, or gallery buttons what they look like first. Um, so let's go to our gallery button. We'll make a new custom event. We'll call this uh, update button. Or sure, update button. And to update this button, we're gonna need to know a few things. Uh, we need to know what we what our image is gonna be. So the name of our image, or just our yeah, the name of our image, and um. Well, we'll deal with that other thing later. Oh, I never actually talked about how we're going to be using our gallery or getting our images, are we? 
Oh, that's my bad. Okay. Previous take, I did that. Back in our widgets, let's go to our dialog. And what we're going to do is in our persistent data, actually, I forgot, uh, persistent data. We're going to add a new, sorry, not macro. We're going to add a new variable. This is going to be unlocked gallery images. And this is going to be an array of names. Uh, the reason I'm using array instead of set is that I'm not sure if set can actually be saved in our save game. Um, so if they can be used, you should use set instead, but we're going to be using an uh, array. And basically, we're gonna, this is going to store the names of all the images we've unlocked. So in our dialog, every time we change our background, we are going to get the um, our options. I mean our um, persistent data, and this is from the previous take, but I already added the variable here, and in our game instance when we create it, I also added our persistent data to our uh, dialog widget here, pass that in, and then in our dialog we would get our persistent data and say get unlocked gallery images and add unique. The um, name of the image. So anytime you would change the background, do this. Plug the name into our name value here. Like that. And I know I said I would clean up my um, graph for this and do the other stuff, but I didn't. I, I, I haven't made my point with how it works. Okay. So obviously now we can't just plug in the uh, name or from our local variable, our backgrounds dictionary over here because that's not going to work anymore. Um, we can't just give it a nickname like bedroom one. We would have to give it the like, actual image, background image, modern dorm room three. Otherwise, our asset manager is not going to be able to find it based on our nickname. So we're actually going to get rid of our background um, dictionary here. Let's delete this. Yes, I want to delete it. Delete, delete our finds, and uh, let's just keep these around for now because I'm going to need to know where they plug in later. But let's just delete those like that, and we're going to get our object from primary asset ID. We can right click this and do split spin, uh, split pin struct, choose gallery images, and then plug in our value name over here to get our new. Um, Texture, cast to texture 2D. Like that. Okay, this is going to be errors until I replace these, so let's do this. And that one. Over here and over here. And over there. Okay. Why am I watching this? Stop watching that value. I'm not sure why I was watching that, but whatever. And plug this into. Um, there. So anyways, back in our script now, whenever we change our backgrounds, we're going to have to use the um, exact name, Arabian Courtyard 2, like that. So the easiest way, of course, would just be to select this, copy, and paste it into our script, like that. Um, other than that, though, it's changing our dialogues. It's going to be—I mean, changing our backgrounds. It's going to be the same. Anyways, back to our actual gallery button. When we update our button, we're going to need to know the name of our uh, image. So let's add a new variable. This is going to be image name. This is going to be a name type, and we want to expose this to spawn. So back in our 
gallery, we're going to right click and expose this to spawn, or sorry, refresh this node. And off this array element, we can break this and plug in our asset name. Back in our gallery button, we're going to say uh, get, sorry, we want to get our persistent data. So let's actually make a variable for this persistent data. Expose this to spawn. And then back in our gallery, let's update this. Plug this into our um, input for our create gallery buttons. And in our game instance, when we create our gallery buttons, we have to pass in our persistent data. So persistent data, like so. And this is giving me an error because I did not compile in my gallery. Let's just compile, save, back in our game instance. If we compile now, it should be fine. Great. Back in our button, once again, we're going to um, say, get our persistent data, get the unlocked gallery images, ask if it contains our image name. And if it does, we're going to do something. If it doesn't, we're going to do something else. And what we're going to be doing is get our button image, get our button, and setting the style. Split this, and we need to set the style for our normal hovered press and disabled because otherwise it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to look different when you hover over it. It's going to go from having our image to not having our image, which is not what we want. So let's split this, split this, split this. Oh, actually, am I disabled? Um, I never actually made an image for our not for our locked gallery images, but you know, if you have one, you would use that. But for now, I'm just going to use black. So back in our uh, button, in the style for disabled, I'm going to do um, black. It's just going to be a black texture. So in our gallery button, um, we would do a select and this is going to be based on our boolean over here to see if our persistent data contains our image and if it does we are going to find the image so get our uh, object from primary data asset ID split that this is going to be our gallery images and our image name so this is going to plug into our true and our false would be our locked image so whatever you use for your locked I'm just going to use um, black. Actually, now that I think about it, do we actually need to do this? I think it's possible we can just plug this in. Sure, let's just plug this in for now, and um, what we're going to do after we update the button is we're going to check to see if we've unlocked this or not. So branch, or sorry, we don't actually have to branch. We can just get our button and set enabled to be if it contains this or not. We try hitting play, go to our gallery, and we have a bunch of buttons. So this did not work. Did it get called? Update button. No, it didn't get called. So back in our gallery, we need to tell it to update the button as well. So there we go. Okay, so now we have a bunch of images, and some of them aren't showing anything uh, for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but they're disabled. So we can't click on them and the images are sort of meh. Um, they really should be black because this does not contain it. Set the disabled. Oh, it's because in here um, we're setting our style, but we didn't. We never set the disabled style. Um, even though the default right here is black, we never set it in here, so it's overriding that black. So we actually do have to go to our inside disabled, split this, and choose our uh, disabled button, or disabled image. I'm going to choose black, compile, and 
There we go, now we have a bunch of black images. Great. Because right now we don't actually have any images in here. If we were to say play, start, we've got our image not working. Um, what image did that try to pass in? Arabian Courtyard 2. Arabian Courtyard 2. This is using the widgets modify name dissolve. Uh, okay, what is this? Um, dissolve plugs into here. It does do this. It sets the image name. The dissolve image is from our cast texture primary asset ID. I'm going to do a branch here, see what's going on, see if this is, or, um, sorry, not branch. Did this not compile? No, it compiled. Start, this is being run, and our variable is not in scope. Let me... This was working in a previous take, so I'm not sure what's going on here. This success is false. It's returning nothing. But why? Disable, or sorry, just remove this breakpoint. We're using gallery images. We copy and paste it to name. The only thing I can think of is that project settings, asset manager, our game backgrounds is set correctly. We're using texture 2D. Yep, these are textures. Alright, let's just try using a different image for now. Um, I'm honestly not sure what's going on, because this was working perfectly in the previous take. There, okay, so that works. Um, I'll have to look into that. I'll probably have to make another video and be like, hey, this is what went wrong, so... Maybe look forward to seeing that? Or don't. Anyways, if we go to our gallery now, this image is now white, and it's not our actual image. Wow. Um, gallery button. Image name. Did we pass this in when we created our buttons? Image name is... yep. Ah, you've got to be kidding me. Alright. This really isn't going to work without any visuals. But I really don't want to have to redo this video one more time. I really have no idea what's going on. Um, set is enabled. If it contains, that would be true. Persistent data is over there. Update the button. Is this being called from our gallery? Yep, we're telling it to update the button. But it's not... oh wait, there it is. Okay, that's very strange. The on hovered is white. We go to our gallery button on... oh, because I never plugged it in. That's my fault. Okay, moving on. Let's see if the other image works. If we hit play, start, go to the next image, and go to the next image. Nope, that one does not work. So let's do another one that I know probably works, which is our modern school one. Because we need to have two images for what we're about to do next, so, um... Modern School 1, save. There we go, and go back to our options and our, uh... Menu, Gallery, and this is all showing up as unlocked for whatever reason. Weird. These are not working fine. Um, gallery button, set is enabled. The Oh, because I set the disabled image over here, so let's break that. I meant to not do this one. This should be black. Sorry, I'm making a lot of mistakes right now, but I really don't want to redo this video. Gallery, here we go. Okay, 
So these are working and this is messed up. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'll fix it later. So when we click on our image, when we click on our button, get our button on clicked, we're gonna have to bring up the uh, gallery image, this over here. And this is gonna be created when we create all of our stuff in our game instance. Um, sure, game instance, so create gallery buttons. We're also have to we're going to have to also create widget for our gallery image. And I'm gonna do this first because our gallery buttons is gonna need a uh, reference to this. So let's add a variable, sorry, not for a gallery. Gallery image, sorry, gallery button. We need a variable for our gallery image. Its type is gonna be gallery image. And we're gonna expose this on spawn as well. Back in our gallery, plug in our gallery image to our um, function so we can pass this in from our game instance over here like that. All right. Great. All right. So back in our gallery button. When we click on this, we are going to bring the gallery image on screen. So gallery image and add to viewport. And then we're going to have to set a bunch of stuff about our gallery image, but we don't actually have our gallery image set up yet, so let's deal with this. We're going to get rid of our canvas panel, we're going to add a button. Actually, I think we do need our canvas panel. I'm not too sure. To be completely honest, let's just wrap it with a canvas panel to be safe. And in our anchors, we're going to make this stretch across the entire screen. This is going to be the um, image in the full screen. Um, and when we click on the button, we're going to exit. So let's call this our um, exit button. We're going to add two more buttons to our canvas panel. This one is going to be our previous. So uh, make this stretch across the entire thing. And I'm going to set the opacity to zero because I don't want to see it. This is going to be our uh, previous button. And we're going to add another button for our next button. This is going to go on the right side. Like that. All right. The exit button is really simple. We're just gonna remove, remove from viewport or remove from parent. Anyways, back in our gallery button. After we add our gallery image to the uh, viewport, we're going to say set um, sorry, get exit button because that's the full screen image of it, and set the style to be our image. Um, this. Once again, for the disabled image, make sure you choose your disabled image, not the actual image itself. Actually, I don't think it really matters for our gallery image. Yeah, it doesn't really need a disabled image, but whatever. So let's pass this in over here here and here. Compile, save, play, and go to our gallery, click on this. This now pops up and our uh, gallery image designer. Our next button is not invisible. Let's make that invisible. So gallery there, this pops up, that pops up. Great, and this is going back to white for some reason on our hovered. Why are you doing this? Gallery button, on clicked, sorry, because it's not plugged in for some reason over there. All right. 
Um, we want to take care of the right and left now. So we want to uh, basically go back and forth between images that we've unlocked. We don't want to, for example, if we were to hit play and go to our gallery. Uh, actually, these are right next to each other. But let's say this was over here instead. When we're on the bedroom image, we don't want to go to the next one and end up at a locked image because that would be boring and we'd have to click several times possibly to get to the next possible image. So we're going to skip ahead directly to this image. Um, so to do that we're going to go to our graph and say on the next button click we're going to do a recursive function because we don't know where we're going to end up at um, if we end up at anywhere at all. So let's get our asset ID list for our, where is it, gallery images. And we need to make that recursive function, so custom event. We'll call this uh, go to next image. And we need the current index that we're on. So let's do a variable, we'll call this um, index. This is going to be type integer. And we actually need to set this when we click on our gallery button. So we also need our gallery button to know what index it is. And it will be exposed on spawn. Back in our gallery, when we create our gallery button, this index is just going to be our array index right there in our uh, for each loop. Back in our gallery button, we're going to say set the gallery image, set the index to be our index. Great, so now we know where we're starting um, with our index. And actually, to prove this works, let's actually unlock another image. Um, sorry, backgrounds. Where's the last one? Modern, first one is modern dorm room one. Okay. Copy this, go back to our dialog over here. Modern dorm room one. Start. Uh, next. Options and uh, quit. We go to our gallery. Okay, so if we start here and we go to the next one, we would skip over this image to reach this image. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here. Back in our gallery image, um, when we click the next one, we're going to find out how many there are. So this is going to be our max index, and we're going to call our go to image next image. So this is going to require a index. It's going to require the max um, index. And let's actually also add a boolean to see if we're going up or down, because I don't want to have to remake this function for um, our next and our previous buttons. So this bool is going to be uh, go to next. And the alternative, of course, would be go to prev previous. So let's call this function now, go to next image. Our index is going to be our current index. Max index is going to be this dot length. And for our on click next button, this is going to be true. For the on click previous button, it's going to be false. So we're just going to copy this, paste that in here with a false. Okay, so for this actual go to next image, we're going to ask if our index is less than our less than our max index and is greater than uh, greater or equal to sorry no just greater than zero. Because we want to make sure we're always within bounds. Um, and if it is, we're going to branch on our go to next, or actually let's do a select. Uh, what we're going to do is say 
Okay, we also need our primary asset ID structures here, so let's add that as a uh, input. Plugging in our asset IDs, like so. And then we're going to get our asset IDs, um, get a reference, because we don't want to make a copy of it, because that takes up more time, and uh, split the thing we're getting out of it, and ask if our asset name is inside of our um, persistent data. So we need a new variable for persistent data. Expose this on spawn, and when we create the widget in our game instance, let's actually also add our persistent data. So, or plug in our persistent persistent data. Anyways, back in our gallery image, we're gonna get our persistent data. Ask if the unlocked gallery images contains the name right there. And if it does, we are going to um, set our image of our exit button. Set style. Oh, we also have to set our um, index too before I forget, otherwise it's not going to work very well. So get our index, set the index to be our, um, well, that will come later. For now, let's uh, split this, set our style normal, split, 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 to be our uh, object from asset ID, split that, choose gallery images, and the name is going to be the name. As for our index, it's going to be um, over here as well. It's going to be branching on our go to next. So we're going to do our uh, index and say, well, off of here, we're going to do a select based on if we're going to a next or if we're going to our previous. If we're going to our next, it's going to be our index plus one. And if we're going to our previous, it's going to be our index minus one. And this will also plug into our uh, set index. So let's see if this works, and hopefully it does. Press play, go to our gallery, choose this image, go to next, and nothing happens. All right, what's going on? Oh, we never um, made this recursive. In order for this to be recursive, it has to actually call itself. So let's off this false, where it says um, if we contain our image and our unlocked images or not. Uh, we're going to call our go to next image, passing in our index from here. Max index is going to be the same. Go to next is going to be the same and our asset IDs is also going to be the same. Let's try that one more time. Gallery, click this image, choose the next one, and there we go. We went to the next image instead of going to a blank one. And if we go to the other side, we go backwards. And we can't overshoot, well, in this case we can't overshoot to the right because of for some reason our images aren't registering as being proper and we have an error. Uh, what is this? Gallery image execute. Access 12 from, okay. This error right here is saying we're accessing 12 from our um, get our get from our primary asset structures, whatever, but I'm not sure why that's giving us an error. Uh, if this is greater than zero, if this is less than our max index, let's try our index minus one. Sorry, not index minus one. Let's get our length minus one. That might be the issue. Uh, 
play, gallery, keep going to the next one, stop, and we don't have an error. Alright, great. I could have sworn there was something else. Oh yes, we want to update our um, gallery images too. Um, otherwise, when we play our game, and then we go to the main menu from playing our game uh, before exiting the game, it won't update our images because right now the gallery images are only updating. Sorry, our gallery buttons images are only updating on this update button, which is only being called in our gallery when it creates the gallery buttons. So let's actually make a new custom event update buttons, and we're just gonna get our uniform grid panel and get children count. Do a for loop. Count minus one. Get child at the index cast to gallery button and update the button. And this function is going to be called in our menu whenever we click on our gallery. So let's say um, get our gallery and update buttons. Compile, save, play, and actually we can't really demonstrate this without having a uh, image pop up. So let's go to our gallery. Um, over here we'll unlock a new image. Instead of modern dorm room 1, it's going to be Oh, these aren't working, but what do we currently have? Okay, so modern dorm room uh, 2. So in this line, we're going to show modern dorm room 2. So if we hit play, go to our gallery, uh, it doesn't show up. If we hit start, go to the second one, and then we go to our options, menu, gallery, it shows up. Great. Right, so this is actually working really well, except for the fact that these images aren't registering as um, being proper for some reason. I have honestly no idea why, and I will try to fix that off stream, or off, we're not, I'm not streaming, off uh, recording. This has already been a pretty long video, and I screwed up for a fair amount during the uh, middle of it, so sorry about that, but I hope you'll stick around in the next video when I'll either do my saving system or my audio. Um, which is entirely dependent on if I can find some music in WAV format.